All right, good morning, guys. Today is gonna be interesting. My brother just got a Volkswagen, and of course, he went and bought one of my dream Volkswagens, which is a Carmen Ghia. Super happy for him, excited to be working on it. There's some engine issues, so I kind of want to diagnose that with him. We're gonna go to my garage just to have a quick walk around of it so you can see. Here is the 1974 Carmen Ghia that my brother just bought, right next to my buddy William's 1972 Carmen Ghia. Pretty cool sight seeing both Ghias in there with the square back here on the side. I've never had so many Volkswagens here at my house at the same time. That's honestly not a whole lot compared to what I've seen on other people's pages, but I don't know, to me, this is, this is awesome. Yeah, this is the 1974 Carmen Ghia that my brother has been kind of eyeing for the past couple of weeks. I mean, I think he's seen it for a while, but didn't really consider getting it because he was kind of looking into bugs and we went to go check out a bug and then he realized now he wants a Ghia. So we checked this out. Today is Saturday. We checked it out on Thursday and made a deal on it. It was running perfectly fine. I mean, it was kind of rough. I mean, the... The Ghia had been sitting for like a year and a half or two years or something. It was running okay. We got it going, driving around the city, or not really the city, just really the neighborhood. And then we made the deal. We were going to try and tow it home through AAA, but of course AAA is going to give us issues with it not technically being registered under my brother's name. So yeah, they didn't want to tow it the 20 miles from, what city was that? <sighs> Cyprus. So Triple A did not want to tow it 20 miles from Cyprus, not even 20 miles, 16 miles or something like that from Cyprus to Torrance. We ended up having to drive it, but just our luck, a mile out just before even leaving the neighborhood, the engine dies and we could not get it to start again. We contacted the previous owner and we left it back on the driveway and the following day, which was Friday, yesterday, we went back and picked it up with my truck. We went and rented a U-Haul to tow it back home to my garage. And it's funny because uh, when we were there, the previous owner was kind of just hanging out there and he immediately knew what was wrong with it. And it was the fuel pump. Right there. So the wiring is kind of wonky on this thing. So he kind of fiddled with the wiring uh, that's under the hood, which I'll show you in a bit. And as soon as he did that, it started right up. So. Maybe we could have driven it yesterday, but we've already spent the money on getting the trailer, so we just towed it back to my house. So right now it should start, but I don't think I'm going to do that right now because it's like 6.30 in the morning and I don't want to wake my neighbors. So I'll just give you a quick walk around of what we have here. This, I think, is the, what is that called? Olympic blue? I forget what the color code is. But this is obviously a respray. What we've gathered is we think this car was previously green. Here we are under the wheel well of the front. You can see some green right here. You can see it on the other side of the car too. And I think we could see it on the door sill over here. There's some green there. And just other random spots of the car where we can kind of see some green. We also think that this was previously colored this teal blue. I think it was painted a while ago. And you can see right here is a little bit lighter shade compared to here. And then after for some time, I guess they repainted it again to the same color. Again, you can see a little bit of green here. And over here... You can kind of see the old blue paint kind of crackling and then they painted over it again. So this has been repainted at least twice, which really isn't too bad. I mean, at least the cars are all in one color for the most part. The rears have the stock 195 60s and the fronts have 185 something. Let's see, 185 60s. So this is a little bit skinnier with a little bit shorter profile tire. I'm pretty sure this has some Bondo in certain areas. Let me show you here. I noticed the panel over there 
You can see, I think maybe this had a dent back here and they drilled some holes to pull it out and then filled it in with some Bondo. Also some down here. There's supposed to be like a Carmen Ghia script here and I think they've filled that in. Some of the window trim here, they did a pretty poor job in masking it. Pretty much in most of the windows, which kind of sucks, but I think we can kind of shave that off over here. And then also on this side. Like really how bad of a job in masking can you do? I mean, at least the car is pretty rust free. I don't see any rust in any of these panels or pretty much the majority of the body. There's some light rust. You can tell it's probably under the paint, but not really super, super concerning. There is this rust hole here, but they kind of layered it with some Bondo and primer. Also, the previous owner kind of showed us the pictures of when they had this car. And it had some blue striping from the front all the way to the back. And even some here to the side, you can see they've peeled that off, but the paint is kind of affected. And then what's worse is I guess they try to peel it up here in the front. And then some of the paint started peeling off right here. Here's that blue, they peeled it off, and then it started ripping off the paint. And you can see the green here. And then a lot of this stuff, they kind of just put some primer on there to keep it from rusting. Up on the roof, in the back, still see some lines here, all the way down. It's just the paint. The body lines look really, really good. Pretty solid. We kind of want to put a magnet all over the body to see where we can find some more Bondo. I'm hoping there's not a lot more, but you never really know these days. Some of the seals are pretty bad, but he did give us some new window seals. So we will look into putting those in right here. You can literally put your finger in there. Not super, super bad. Right here, they put some silicone to keep that from leaking. Here's some more terrible masking job all over the window seals. It actually also didn't come with these window wipers, but my buddy William had an extra set, so we just put it on here. Missing an antenna, but it's actually sitting in the back. Right there. Overall, the exterior looks pretty nice. He did remove the bumper, but he gave it to us, so we're going to try to figure out how we can install that. Should be pretty straightforward, like these brackets should just go right into these slits, and then there's like three bolts that hold it. But the thing that I'm not super familiar with is this. I don't know if this is supposed to attach somewhere to the back of the bumper or not. Headlights look pretty good. Not really the biggest fan of the amber turn signals. I wonder if there's like a clear one. If there is, that would be nice. Let's take a look at the hood. Oh, I wanna show you the hood latch. It's this cable here that you have to pull really hard. I've already done that earlier, so I don't need to do that again, but... In here looks pretty good too. That's my jerry can that I brought over. But yeah, here looks pretty good. Again, I think this was repainted from the original green. I think the previous, previous owner really did his time taking this car completely apart and then repainted it to this Olympic blue that I think it's called. But they, I mean, they did the job right. They just didn't do the best job in my opinion. But I mean, honestly, this is way better than anything I can do. So props to them, I guess. The wiring here, I don't know, man. It's like, I'm getting high blood pressure just looking at it. This is the cable for the electronic fuel pump. And I guess during the time we were checking it out, it must have shaken or moved around or whatever. But basically the connection to that block right there may not be the best connection because it, it basically just stopped working the fuel pump and that's why the engine died on us. It's missing the glove box thing. There's no stereo. Springs look intact. Even down here looks pretty good. You notice these inspection holes are tape covered in there too. There's a bit of leakage here which we think is because the water may be getting through here, coming down and then leaking down here and then collecting down there. So we have to try and figure out how to stop that. Same thing down here. It's basically just like 
a bucket that collects water down here. So we have to try and figure that out to prevent it from rusting even further. This fuel tank, it's missing these clips or mounting hardware here, here, and there. It kind of moves around, I think. I imagine it to be kind of rattling when we're driving. So we have to figure that out. It does not have the, the canister thing, which let me show you what that looks like. This one here. But really, you don't, you don't need that. That's kind of just to prevent the car from smelling too much like gas, but whatever. Let's take a look at the engine. The engine, the guy says it's a stock 1600 dual port. It has alternator. It doesn't have the, the pulley that has the degree numbers on there. I suggested we try and switch it out to that one. Also, one thing I noticed that was kind of funny was he put the fuel pump right here and bypassed the original fuel pump, the mechanical one, but he didn't remove it. Most people, when they go electric fuel pump, they'll take this out and put like that block off plate. But for some reason, he just left it on there. Maybe he just didn't really find the block off plate and just kind of gave up. Right there, if you follow this ring terminal, that goes to the ground of the battery, which I think is kind of a funny spot to put it in. I mean, me personally, I would either put it on the block somewhere else or on the transmission or on the body. This carburetor here, I actually can't figure out what it is. Oh, let's take a look at what it is right here. It is a 34 Pic 3. The brand is called Bocar. This was kind of concerning also. This bolt right here put a bunch of silicone to keep that from leaking. I don't know why he did that. I mean, the guy, he, he kind of had some broken English. I mean, he was super nice, super chill, answered all our questions, but there was a little bit of a lang language barrier. I mean, his son was there to kind of translate for us, but you know, there's kind of just some things that get lost in translation. I did point this out. I asked him like, hey, what's the deal with this? And his answer was in regards to this thing, which is the, the part of the vacuum for the vacuum advance on the distributor. This doesn't have a vacuum advance, so he kind of eliminated this and just plugged that up and it's it's kind of ugly I, kind of, I would rather just put a different kind of plug on there we have no idea why this has so much silicone they did replace this thing this cooling tin because usually it has a hole right here that connects to i think the heat exchangers or maybe the yeah i think the part of the exhaust that goes to here which has the fan from this shroud but since they blocked that off they replaced this to eliminate the hot air and cool air from kind of interchanging between the, the engine bay. Oh, I just noticed there's a, a loose screw right there. So we'll figure out where that fell off of. They replaced this with one of these little filter things. Alternator looks all right. This coil pack is definitely not factory. It says on it, non-external resistor required. I really, really don't like the position of where they put this this, um, this gas filter. Also, just the, the fuel pump definitely should not be put here. It's, it's, it's literally right next to cylinder three, which always runs hotter. So you don't want to overheat that because it's just going to start to fail. Even the wiring is super wonky. Like I said, we drove it around. It was fine. And the connection over there just kind of went crazy and it just stopped working on us. And the whole time we were trying to diagnose it on the side, we thought there was no spark. So we took the spark plugs out, checked to see if we had spark. Honestly, we only checked spark on cylinder two and it had spark. So we kind of just assumed everything else had spark. We didn't really check the other three, but we kind of just ditched it that night. Fortunately, like I said, the owner was there and he knew exactly what was wrong with it. So. We got it to start, now we know. This battery is Williams off of his gear. I think this is off like a Civic or something. Super small battery. Let's see, I don't know how many cranking amps this is. It doesn't really say, maybe it says it on the side, but whatever, it works. We're gonna get a new one for this because I have a spare battery there that's dead and we can use that as core. The engine bay is really nicely painted. Let's see if we can even spot any green on here. Even in here, it's like painted blue. That's kind of crazy how, I mean, if it really was all green, 
then the previous previous owner must have really just took this whole car apart to repaint it. This is not original. You can see it's like a different color. Look, take a look at this. So the bottom of that is all metal. Here on Williams, this is a 72. The bottom of his has this plastic here that catches the water that goes through these fins or grills, I mean. This one here where the water goes in through the grill, gets caught by that metal, and then it comes out down the side. Also, there is a bit of rust down here because of where the water comes down here. It's supposed to drip out of these holes, but I guess it just kind of collects here and then it drips. And you can kind of see that down here it started to rust a little bit, I think because of all the water. The exhaust and the headers, I'm not the biggest fan of them. These are MP dual exhaust. And you can see here, it's super, super rusted. So we're gonna try to figure out how we can take these out because they're in really, really bad shape. Yeah, I mean, it runs pretty solid, kind of. I mean, it kind of shakes a little bit, but what Volkswagen doesn't, you know, at this point. So he's got the J-tubes here. He's got the, the full headers and the full exhaust. The cooling tin looks to have been changed in order to be able to use that without the heat exchangers. There's a bit of leaking right there underneath the block, which is not really a biggest surprise. Same thing under the transmission. The pan actually looks really good too. Let's take a look at that. Not super, super bad. You can see they kind of did some uh, paint repair down there. You can see that bolt going through the pan right there. And I'll show you what that's for in a second. There's another one right here. And I think there, yeah, there's a couple more on the, the driver's side as well. You can see right there. Overall, the pan looks not perfect, but better than most. The guy also claims that he did brand new brakes front and rear. So in the fronts, he said that he put brand new rotors, which I guess I kind of believe it. I mean, it doesn't look brand, brand new, but the lip right here looks pretty flush. So I don't think it's super, super old painted that red, even the caliper is painted red, and this cap was painted red. This other side here looks pretty good too. Also new brake pads, he said. This speedometer cable is brand new. That goes right here, goes to the back of the speedometer. But the issue is the speedometer and the gas gauge doesn't work. So we have to figure out what's going on with that. The speedometer, I mean, it's a mechanical one inside the gauge. And the guy was saying like, yeah, it could be the cable, could not be. But I mean, if this is brand new and it's hooked up to that, then it may be inside the gauge, which means some of the teeth of the gears might be broken. We'll see when we take that out. This one here, he also gave us a brand new fuel sender because again, the gas gauge doesn't work. So the guy, he says that he thinks it could be this, but I mean, now that we're looking at it, this looks like it's painted and the ground just may not be properly grounded to the actual tank. See Williams here. So he created a separate wire that grounds to this and directly over to, I think the body is where he bolted it into. So we wanna try that on his first, put a, a ring terminal under this bolt here and just ground it somewhere we think that's gonna be safe. Hopefully we can get that gas gauge to work. I did forget to mention about the bumper though. So my brother's not really the biggest fan of the later model Ghia bumpers and also the lights. They're just enormous, like the taillights are, let's, let's go take a look at it. Look, look how absolutely giant this is. Same here with the 72. It's like my, my whole forearm and the older ones, I think they're like almost half the size if anything and these bumpers are just really really bulky i mean i think for now it's going to work out okay but you see how with williams gears so these actually came with the car when he bought them and i think it's like a fiberglass or plastic or something but it's like the blade style kind of looks like the older style gears the older style ones are kind of a lot skinnier similar to this and the really older ones even have like a bar here which is what my brother ultimately wants but for now this will do it's it's really just to try and get it up and driving. Let's take a look at the front. See up here, he also has the uh, slim bumpers, whereas these ones are enormous. But we're gonna just put them on just so it doesn't look like it just got a fresh new, new chin. We were kind of laughing because without the bumper, honestly, it kind of looks like, like you know, when a, when a person with a beard first shaves it off, 
and it looks like they just have like no chin i don't know that's just i mean it's not bad we're not knocking it but i don't know not really our style so we're just gonna throw this on until we figure out a whole new bumper situation similar to williams right here now the interior the door is actually open and closed very nice you hear that Ooh. Ooh, that's nice. Let's take a look at the other door. Very, very nice. The interior is completely redone. You can see these seats are completely fresh. All new vinyl or leather or whatever. Over there too on the driver's side. The carpeting is nice and fresh. Looks really clean. The door panels all redone here too and then back here this this is the antenna actually and back here there's like that cargo space i know williams has a little cover that goes here i don't know if they're supposed to have that and if this is just missing if it is we'll probably just fab something up to cover that it's not really the biggest deal though this opens up for some extra cargo here. I think some people actually put their batteries here, which is where William wants to put his. So I'm gonna talk to my brother, see if we can do that just to kind of clean up his engine bay. The floor pans actually look really good down here too. No big rust holes. I mean, there's tiny pinholes, but nothing to really worry about too much. Under the carpeting here, they even have like the this foam padding stuff. There's the floor pan, looks really good. Yeah, these are all fresh carpeting. I just noticed, I think this thing may need to be underneath the carpet. I'm not sure, actually. I don't know. But yeah, see the seats here look completely redone. Let's show you what the pan looks like down here. Oh, what's this? Huh, we'll take a look at what that is. Yep, the pan looks pretty good. Oh, I wonder what this groove is for. Maybe it's for like harnessing cable or something. I don't know, but yeah, the floor pan looks pretty good. This is all glued in place. All here looks really good too. The pedals are missing the, the rubber pieces, but William actually had a spare set. All right. So it's missing the stereo, not really a big deal. They put the cigarette lighter here, which kind of sucks because they, they enlarged this hole and me personally, I would rather not cut any of the factory panels, but they did, so we'll just leave that. If anything, we'll probably change that to like a USB thing. This was actually also missing the Carmen Gear script, but William had a spare. Well, actually, this was his original, but he covered his dash with like a like an alligator skin thing, so this was not in use. So we may put that here. Really cleans that up real nice. This is obviously not the correct one because it's not the right color, but this is pretty busted. We'll just put that there. It's kind of tough to open this, but it's also missing the, the glove box basket thing. So we'll figure that out. Ugh, that's kind of nasty. <laughs> we were laughing about this steering wheel. I think this is like a... What is this, like a 12-incher? Um, maybe even 10, I don't know, but it's, it's like a go-kart. It's so, oh, I just locked the steering, but yeah, it's so small that when you're not driving and you just wanna make a U-turn or something, it's like super, super hard to turn. William gave us a spare wheel. I think he gave us a 12-inch. So we're gonna throw that on. Hopefully that kind of helps it a little bit better. Ignition works with a key that they gave us. They actually gave us two keys. Oh, look, hold on. You can actually see here the original green behind the door. Oh, interesting. This doesn't have green. Oh, yeah, you can definitely see actually underneath the blue here, there's a hint of green. This dash cover is pretty good. Mirror looks good. Oh, yeah, and it show you the headliner. Headliner looks really, really good. That's all brand new as well. The previous owner did say that he completely redid the whole shifter bushing all underneath here, so it shifts really, really solid. Like, barely any slop. This came off, 
but that's a super easy fix. I'll just need to take this boot off and then fix the whole mechanism in there. That's, that's not super bad. Oh yeah, now regarding those bolts under the pan, you can actually see this right here is holding the brackets to these seats. I don't think these seat, yeah, th they're definitely not sitting on the factory rails, which you can see right here. So what they did is they bolted it into the pan. So we kind of, we're not sure how we like that. I mean, my brother's a little bit taller than me. So when he's sitting here, his his head is like right up here. And uh, yeah, um, not the biggest fan of that. So we want to try and figure out what we can do to either lower that or switch the seats out. I don't know. I mean, if he doesn't, these seats look really good anyway. So we'll probably leave it, it for now. They wired this horn right here. Oh, the battery's unhooked. Let's show you the door jams. Oh, even some more green right here too. Oh man, it's probably like 70 degrees right now, but I am sweating. This garage is so hot. All right. Oh, I'm just seeing inside this gauge right there, the cap right there, the cap, oh, a little spider. That cap right there goes here that just fell off. He did say the speedometer is not working. Looks like the, yeah, it says three, or what does that say? 30,963, that's not working. This gas gauge is not working, but he gave us a replacement. Don't know if that clock works. I know the oil pressure light works, but the generator light doesn't work. So we need to diagnose that. The guy actually did a really, really good job with torsioning the, the clutch. Really good pressure there. There's really good brake pressure too. I mean, he did say that he did a complete brake refresh. He told us all the rotors, all the pads, the two rear drums, the shoes, but he did not replace the hoses or the master cylinder. Uh, the cylinders and the drum brakes, yeah, he replaced, but not the master cylinder. But it has really good pressure. This pedal here, man, it was... I've never experienced that before. I'm, it might be common, but I just, me personally, have never experienced it. But this was kind of sticky, so when we first started it, it... Um, of course, we were kind of pedaling this to kind of get it to start. And um, when it did start, it just stuck and then just revving the engine like crazy. And I kind of had to like reach down there and pull that backwards. So we have to try and figure out to um, make sure that doesn't happen again. Again, here in the back from the driver's side, this here looks really solid. Yeah, man. I mean, it's, it's actually really good. I mean, I was telling my brother that the condition that I got my square back in was miles and miles behind where the where this gear currently sits and i was saying sorry that's the leather seats i promise it's not me <laughs> but yeah i was telling my brother that the condition of this car is in way better condition than when i got my square back because the intention of my square back was to build it as a project and uh, kind of just been working on it for the past couple of years and his main criteria is to buy one that's already running. He originally wanted one that's kind of patinaed out, but we found this with this paint condition and could not be happier. So we got a really good deal on it. So now my brother is going to come over later today. This morning, he's going to go to AAA to get it titled under his name, get it registered legally. This doesn't need smog. Of course, in California, if you don't know, 75 and older, does not need emissions or smog. So all you need to do is register and insure. This is a 74. This is the last year in production for these cars. So he kind of just lucked out and uh, yeah, does not need smog for this. So it's great. So all it needs is just paperwork. I don't think they need to do any kind of inspection on the car at all. So you don't even need to bring this car anywhere. It's just going to sit here. He does the paperwork, comes home and puts a new sticker on here. So he's gonna come later today. We're gonna to diagnose the engine just to make it run a little bit better and then uh, see if we can drive it around. I'm gonna see if I can get it to start right now, actually, because he gave me the spare key. Okay, because this has the electronic fuel pump, the guy did tell us that when we put the key into the ignition and turn it into accessory, 
just wait a few minutes or not a few minutes a few seconds and you should you should hear the fuel pump to start to run and then start the engine that's what we were doing before is we were just immediately cranking it and the fuel pump wasn't even working and we were starving the engine or the carburetor with gas that's why it wasn't starting so hopefully we can start it right now forgot to put the battery on sign i did notice that the generator or i mean the alternator light doesn't work on the gauge there man i was kind of hoping that wasn't the case because we were thinking that maybe just the light in the gauge doesn't work or the alternator doesn't work so that's why i unhooked the battery because if the engine's running and you take off this ground it technically should continue to run because it's getting the spark from the generator Al alternator i'm not used to saying alternator but yeah, it should be getting power from the alternator to spark the spark plugs, but because because it died right now, that means that it actually was pulling power from the battery, which is not good. So I think that's something that we have to do is replace the alternator. Here's another thing I wanted to test is the battery. And we've checked this battery. This is pretty good. I think it was showing like 12.3 volts or something, which is more than enough. So let's see what this is going to show right now. 12.2 so it's already gone down because of the amount of times that we've started this car i want to start the engine and then check the voltage see if it goes any higher than that Yeah, you can see that this did not go any higher than 12 volts. So this is continuously draining the battery. No good. So this is going to need to come off to replace. I already told my brother, so I think he's going to put one on order. Or we can try and find one from AutoZone or something. But yeah, this definitely needs to get replaced before we start driving this thing. Now the last thing I want to do is go over some of these extra parts that came with the car. Right here is the extra fuel gauge. This is brand new, so we need to figure out if the fuel gauge in the car currently works. If we do that grounding wire thing, if it works, then we don't have to deal with this. We can probably sell this or keep it as a spare. If not, we're going to open the gauge and try to pop this in. This other one here is the fuel sender. We'll also put this in if, if we absolutely need to. Give us some window seals here, all these rubbers. Some of these little rubber grommet things. Let's see. Gave, gave us some 320 sandpaper. And then these are door panel clips. He also gave us the extra seat covers. They actually look really good. So it's funny because he gave us the receipt here that he bought these from TMI. And he got the seat covers for $240. Carpet kit for $155 and the headliner for 70 bucks. So all of that in total was just over $500. But it's funny because he used the headliner, he used the carpet, but didn't use the seats because he probably got these done separate. I don't know, either way, he gave us the seat covers. I'm, I'm actually hoping these seat covers will fit mine. If they do, I'll probably redo mine. But mine is original, I don't know, we'll see. William gave us some new parts here also so thank you for that william this is that bigger steering wheel again i think this is like a 12 inch one these are the other parts that's connected to that steering wheel in the back and give us some door panel thingies some new knobs oh yeah this is for the glove box doesn't have the key but we can use this to replace the one that's currently in the car we have the rubber foot pads for all the pedals some uh, some new window winders and then this thing that goes 
underneath the stereo. But yeah, overall, this Carmen Ghia is in excellent shape. I mean, it's not perfect by any means, but it's honestly in way better condition than when I got my square back. So he's already talking about wanting to lower it, put some different wheels on there. <laughs> when he came by, he was, he was even staring at my wheels because he really wants these to put on here. I don't know, what do you guys think? These wheels on this Ghia, at first we were thinking it's kind of bright. Oh, we actually even have my old ones here that we were kind of test fitting yesterday. Kind of like that. And I mean, it's pretty bright, but to be honest, I really like it. I mean, I personally like chrome wheels. It would be nice if the chrome trim was still on here, but it looks like they've kind of filled in the holes. At least it has chrome bumpers. I think it'll look really cool. But yeah, this is my brother's 1974 Carmen Ghia project. Or, I mean, you can call it project, but it's, it's already running and driving. Pretty jealous, pretty jealous here. But at least I can still kind of work on it and show my brother the ropes. Kind of get his feet wet with, with the whole Volkswagen world. And then bring him along to some Volkswagen car meets to kind of get some inspiration from other Ghias. By the way... I originally wasn't gonna do a walk around video of this, but my buddy Jason, tinkering guy on both YouTube and Instagram, kind of convinced me to just shoot a quick video of this. I don't really do too many walk arounds. I kind of just do like project DIYs on my own projects. So this is a nice little walk around. Hopefully you guys can kind of see what we're dealing with here. And if you have any other inputs that you want to suggest that we should do or other possibilities. Again, I'm not super well versed on Carmen Gias. So yeah, be nice to me guys. Thanks a lot.